Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I've put together a collection of 10 French Country Thrift Flips. For our next project, I'm going to be giving these three canvas panels a makeover. I got them for a dollar each. I'm going to give each of the panels three coats of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. This chalk paint sticks really well to materials like this canvas, so I'm not worried about needing to do any priming. And I'm also going to be painting the edges of the canvas as well. When I am thrifting, I do tend to look out for projects like this because it's much cheaper than getting them from a craft store. For these canvases, I'm going to be using the three larger botanical designs from the inlay and I'm just working out my spacing. I'm now going to be using IOD's Classic Elements and Olive Crest Moulds. So I am first going to dust my mould with some cornstarch and then I'm working my Jovi air dry clay into one of the elements there. I am going to have to repeat this three times so I'm positioning that lovely design at the top of the canvas and then to create a border I am going to be using this little beaded design here. It is beautiful and delicate and I definitely suggest that you sort of flex the mould a little bit before you pull it out otherwise sometimes they tend to break. So you can see how I'm arranging them here. And then I did grab the olive crest mold and I'm just taking one element from that and using it down the bottom. And you can see I'm just trying to work out my spacing here and how I want to arrange them. And I've decided that for each side, I am going to have to have three sets of that little beaded border. These molds are so gorgeous and very easy to use. They're perfect for making a plain canvas into something beautiful or even to add some interest to a plain frame. Now that I have my molds where I want them, I'm using a strong wood glue to attach them to my canvas and I'm just carefully positioning them wherever they need to be and making sure that I have good contact. Once I have all my castings glued down, I'm cleaning up the excess glue with a baby wipe. I let these sit for several hours and then came in and gave each of these canvases and the castings a coat of Dixie Belle's buttercream. I like to paint my castings before they're completely dry as I find that I get less cracking. I can already see that there are going to be small gaps between each of the little beaded trims that I made, but I've decided to embrace that and just have the gaps there because they are all in approximately the same spot on each of the canvases. But if I didn't want the gap, I could always make some more and fill in the gaps. Next, I'm going to start organizing my paint inlays. I am going to trim off the text of each of the little botanical designs. And I'm also going to trim a little bit closer to each of the designs just to make working with them a little bit easier. Once I have all of my inlays ready, I'm going to apply an even coat of the buttercream chalk mineral paint. And again, remember we need this to be thick enough that the paint inlay will actually transfer, but not too thick. You really need a happy medium here. So I've got a good coat down and I'm going to press the inlay design side down. Remember we want that grid facing up at us. And then I am very carefully going to press the paint inlay into the wet paint. Once I have all of the inlay pressed down, I'm going to take my mister and I'm going to dampen the design and then use a damp cloth to again, apply just a little bit more pressure. And then I'm gonna repeat the same step for each of these canvases. If you decide that you want to use your paint inlay over something like stained wood, for example, you can also use the inlay with some sort of a clear coat. 
I've definitely had success doing that, but you just want to keep an eye on it and you don't want to let your inlay sit for too long. You only want to give it just enough time to dry and then you need to come in and dampen it and go through the same steps that I'm doing here with the chalk paint. I've also had success using mineral paints that have built-in sealers, but the same rules apply. You definitely don't want to let it sit in the product for too long, just long enough to dry, and then you want to remove it as soon as possible. Otherwise, sometimes your paint inlay can get a little bit stuck so something to keep in mind if you're going to try the inlays with those sorts of products Now I'm going to set my canvases off to one side to dry for about half an hour and then we'll be ready for the next step now that my inlays are completely dry I'm going to mist each of them well and then take a damp cloth just to sponge off a lot of the excess and then after about 60 seconds I am going to very carefully start peeling each of the designs away. If I feel any resistance I'll come in with some more water and mist it again lightly and this will help the paint inlay to release. So remember you want to be very gentle with this step and you want to be very careful with your paint inlays because you will get another few uses out of these and I just tend to lay mine off on a flat surface until it's completely dry and then I put it back in my inlay pack and store it safely for the next use. So you will probably have noticed that on the inlays themselves, there are remnants of the buttercream paint that I've used. So when you go to use your inlays again, you definitely wanna keep this in mind when you're choosing your paint color. It's a good idea to use the same color or a similar color so that the leftover paint isn't too obvious. Or you can use a contrasting color and it will be an effect and it will give you more of a layered vintage paint finish that looks like it's had had lots of paint jobs over the years so again it just depends on what look you're going for. Once I've removed all of my paint inlays I'm going to allow these to dry for about an hour and then I'm going to use a spray sealer by Rust-Oleum. It really doesn't matter if you use flat or gloss we just want to seal this without actually having to run a brush over it because that can cause smearing. Once my clear spray sealer has dried, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat to seal the entire canvases. Next, I'm going to be layering some of Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stains. I'm starting off with the All Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. This is a water-based product, so I like to use it like a glaze. I'm applying it and then I'm using a baby wipe and a paper towel to wipe it back. I want it to stay mainly in the details and around the edges. Then I'm coming in with Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. And again, I'm following the same sort of pattern. I'm going around the outside a bit heavier and then doing some light brush strokes through the center and using a baby wipe to wipe back a lot of the excess. I really want this to have an aged and weathered look so we are letting it pull in certain areas and wiping it back in others. Next I'm coming in with Bayou Moss and I am applying that as well. This is a lovely green tone and again these are botanicals so I want a little bit of a, a natural feel as well here. You can see I'm also adding the same stains to the sides as well to tie it all together. While my stains are still wet, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Charcoal Dixie Dirt. This is a powdered form product and it's just like it sounds. It's meant to give something a sort of dirty weathered look. So you can see that I'm focusing in on a lot of the details of the castings there and I'm adding it but I'm also going to be coming in with a clean brush shortly to wipe off a lot of the excess. This is a product that you can add and then take away and really get it to the look that you're after. And I felt like this product really went with the look that I was trying to achieve here. It also comes in an earth tone, which is a bit more brown, and it also comes in an ash color, which is a bit more gray. So it just depends what look you're going for as to which one you are going to use. Keep in mind that this product has to be added to something like a wax or like I'm using today, a damp glaze or a damp stain. It needs to have something to stick to, otherwise it will just come off. This is also one of the last steps that you'll do on your projects if you're thinking of adding Dixie Dirt.
I want to age this even a little bit more, so I'm taking IOD's black permanent ink and I'm adding it to the crackle stamp from the Vintage Textures stamp. And you can see I'm just lightly pressing it on my canvas in random places and I'm just adding that to give it a bit more of an antique look here as if it's a artwork that has cracked over time. I'm also going to add some of the crackle to the sides as well to tie it all together. So you could definitely use a different color here or you could use paint or I've even actually used the same stains that I used on this project. It really just depends what look you're going for. I liked the contrast on this of the black ink. Finally, I'm going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax and I'm adding it to the casting details. I'm not being too heavy. I want it to look like the gold has worn off over time. I'll then seal each canvas with easy peasy spray wax. And here are our finished artworks. I'm really happy with how these turned out to think that these just started off as $1 canvases at the thrift store and by using beautiful IOD molds and the beautiful inlays, I'm able to create some lovely artworks for someone's home. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. Our final project is this little wooden stand that I found. I think I paid a dollar for it, so it's made of wood. I always grab wooden items if I see them. It had these little plastic feet on them. They were not cute. They did not rise it up enough, so I took those off using a flathead screwdriver. I'm going to glue on these little wooden beads using my hot glue gun. This is going to lift it up enough so that it looks like a cute little riser. I'm then going to give the riser a coat of Dixie Belle's drop cloth chalk mineral paint. I'm going to be painting the top and the bottom. Next, I grabbed my Trimmings 3 mold and some Jovi Air Dry Clay. And after I have dusted my mold with cornstarch, I'm going to start pressing my clay into one of the trimming designs there. I thought that it would look really cute if I added some trim around the outside border of my riser. So I'm running my thumb along the micro rim there and then very carefully pulling my molds out. I'm going to have to make three of those and then you'll see shortly that I did have to make a smaller version of this so that it would connect properly. I'm using a strong wood glue on the back of my molds, making sure that I've got them entirely covered and then I'm attaching them to the riser. IOD's trimming molds are designed so that you are able to connect the different parts of the trim seamlessly. So these are very easy to work with. I did come up a little bit short there, as you can see. So I am going to cast a little bit more of the trim there and then I'll be able to glue the last piece down. This little piece was just a little bit short of fitting perfectly, but I really feel like you're not gonna be able to notice once I paint it. Once all the castings are glued down, I'm coming in with a coat of Dixie Belle's drop cloth and I'm being gentle because my castings are still pretty fresh. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Chateau Paint Inlay. This is a beautiful French style design. It is a larger design, but you can break it down into smaller images. So this is one part of it. Now I have used this one before, so this is going to be the second use of this paint inlay. So I'm setting those to one side and I'm going to apply a generous coat of drop cloth chalk mineral paint. And I'm just being careful to make sure that I have the entire area where the inlay is going to go covered. I'm then going to mist my paint a little bit more just to get a little bit more moisture in there. And then I'm going to carefully press my paint inlay design side down into the paint. So you want to see the grid side facing you. I'm also just making sure here that my image is going to meet at the middle and join together as seamlessly as possible. I'm then going to mist the paint inlay and I'm going to come in with a brayer just to smooth the design down. You could also use a damp sponge. 
After about 35 minutes, my inlay is dry. You can see that it's faded. So I'm going to come in with my mister again and I'm going to thoroughly dampen the inlay and then I'm going to give it about 60 seconds. I'm then going to come in and I'm going to very gently start to pull the inlay away. If you feel resistance, come back in with some more water, let it sit for another 30 seconds and then start to pull your design away again. So remember, this is the second use of this inlay, so it is going to look a bit more faded, but I am loving this more vintage looking design. I'm going to sit these off to one side because I may get another use out of them. I'm then coming in with some 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth off some of those rough edges that were created by the creases in my inlay. I'm then going to seal the entire design with a mix of 50% water and 50% clear coat. When that's dry, I'm gonna seal the whole thing with gloss clear coat. Next, I'm going to use some sandpaper and also a flathead screwdriver to do a bit more distressing around the edges of our riser. Following that, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm going to brush it on the outside of the riser and because I have my gloss clear coat down, I'm going to be able to wipe back a lot of that so that it just tones the paint and sits in the details. I'm also going to be adding a little bit into the center part of the design as well, but I'm going to wipe a lot of that back. I just want to give this a bit more of a vintage wall look. I'm then coming in with Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. I love this combination. So I'm adding that over the top of where the All Natural went. And again, I'm wiping a lot of that back. I just love the tone and age that combining these two stains creates. You could also use glaze or wax to get a similar look if you're going to give this a try at home. Finally, I'm grabbing one of my favorite products, Dixie Bell's Gold Gilding Wax, and I'm adding just hints of the wax around the outside. Just a subtle hint of that. I don't want to go overboard. And here's our finished riser. I just love how this turned out. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. For our next project, I'm going to be using this frame that I thrifted. My first step is to remove the artwork. Someone had taped it in. It wasn't a very nice looking job. We don't actually need the backing anyway. I'm going to be making this look more like a window. So after I finished removing all of that, I'm going to use some more of our vintage Laurel milk paint and I'm going to be applying two coats. I'm not going to be doing much distressing or speeding up of the drying process here. I'm not a fan of that yellowy frame. So I really would prefer solid coverage on my frame. Once my paint was dry, I used a baby wipe and a razor to remove the paint from the glass. Because you're going to be able to see through the glass, I also decided to remove that hanging string there. I'll just add my own later. I'm then going to further secure the glass in place with some hot glue. There's already some attachments there to hold it in place, but to make it a little bit more secure, I thought that the glue would help. I'm then going to be using IOD's new Maze Roses Transfer. This is a transfer that you piece together. So my first step was to remove the text from the center and then start to work out where I was going to have to cut the design. So we are going to lose some of the flowers, but we will get most of this design on the frame. I will just save any of those off cuts for other projects. So once I've worked out where I need to cut, I'm peeling off the backing and then carefully pressing down. Just make sure that you are sure of where 
way you want it because once this touches glass, it's going to start to come off. So I've got my transfer down. I'm doing a little bit of rubbing over the entire design and then I'm picking a corner and starting to lift as I'm rubbing. This helps the design to begin to release and I'm just going to repeat the same process until I have the entire transfer down. I've been wanting to do a project like this for a little while, but it can be hard to find vintage windows that are suitable to use. So I hope that this has inspired you to keep an eye out for frames that might work instead. For the next section, I need to consider where the rose is going to meet up with the other one. So I'm trimming off some of the excess paper so I can see where I have to crease and then cut my transfer. And then when I have it correct, I'm going to place it down just like before. If I get any excess uh, transfer on the frame, I'm just going to scratch that off or even just paint over it. I'd rather have too much than too little in this case. So repeating the same process for up the top, making sure that I'm matching up where that rose connects with the bottom section, trimming off the excess, and then I am going to be able to start transferring it down. These are super easy to use on glass, but like I said, just make sure that you know exactly where you want it to go and don't let it actually touch the surface until you you have it in the right position. I am going to continue to rub and burnish that down and now I need to work out how I'm going to have my text. So you can see I cut off the excess to make sure it was all going to fit and now I'm going to start to rub those down as well. Definitely take your time with the letters. They were a little bit fiddly and I had to make sure that I had it all down and perfect otherwise they tended to slip and move. So just take your time when you're doing this particular part. Down in the bottom left and right hand corners, there was some gaps. So I decided to trim off some of the excess transfers and to apply those. You really can piece these together really easily. I just wanted to fill in these gaps so that none of that glue or the other part of the frame was visible. Finally, to make this look more like a window, I grabbed one of my handles that I had in my stash. This is just off a piece of furniture that I've done up in the past, and I'm going to hot glue that down. I just felt it made it look more like a window having that there. I'm then going to seal my milk paint on the frame with Dixie Belle's Bestang Wax in clear. And here's a look at the finished project. I love how this turned out. I've been wanting to use this transfer for quite some time, but hadn't found the right project, but this just turned out exactly the way I wanted it. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. So we're going to start with the laurel mold today. I'm dusting it with cornstarch before I use IOD's air dry clay. The clock was already gorgeous when I got it, but it was a Grecian style. It's not the style I wanted to go with. So we are going to glue the molds straight over the top. I could not get the details that were already on there off sadly, but the clock face did come out. So that's definitely going to make uh, my job a bit easier. So I'm just working my clay in using the micro rim rubbing my thumb along to get a nice clean line and then gently pulling my molds out so you can see that the lovely laurel mold there is going to cover that nicely now for this step I could definitely use resin however I really like the cracking and aged look of clay so that's why we're going with the air dry clay today So now that I've got both of my laurel pieces down, I am going to make a beautiful little bow to go in the center there. And I'm also making a little crown to sit on top. And then I am going to look at some trim. Now, I thought about doing the slimmer trim, but the gap up the top where I want this to go um, was thick enough to accommodate the thicker trim. So I'm just gluing down the elements that I'm happy with and making sure that the clock's not going to be damaged. I'm applying my molds with wood glue, um, but you can use any sort of strong glue. 
Next, I'm making one of the larger crowns. I'm going to place it over the existing design on the side there. I feel like it's going to blend in nicely and I didn't want anything too chunky on the side there. Once I have all my molds glued down, I am adding a coat of Dixie Belle's drop cloth over the entire clock, being very careful as I work over my fresh molds, they aren't dry yet. So I'm trying to be careful not to damage any of the details. coat is dry I'll come in with a second coat when the second coat is dry I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's satin clear coat to seal the entire piece Clear coat is dry. I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's grunge glaze and working it into the details. I'm wiping it back off all the high points and just letting the glaze settle in the lower points. I'm also making sure that it's not too dark. If you're not a fan of glaze and you want to try this project, just leave the glazing part out. When the glaze is dry, I'm using my finger and applying Dixie Belle's Gold Gilding Wax. I'm just using it in a few places. I want it to look like faded gold leaf, so I'm just hitting it in a few areas. Also adding the same gilding wax around the edge of the clock. It was a similar colour but I wanted to tie it in better. Finally I'm putting the clock face back into the centre. Keep watching to see how it turns out. And here are the finished products. I really hope that you like these projects. I love the amazing ability of IOD's moulds to completely transform something plain. I think that that stand and that clock go beautifully together. I can imagine them on a dresser or sideboard. My first project is this wood plaque that I found. It was in good shape, but obviously I wanna give the front of it a makeover. So after cleaning, I'm going to be adding two coats of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. Once my paint is dry, we're going to be selecting a design from the Melange Paint Inlay by IOD. I've been wanting to use these lovely sunflowers for a while, so I'm going to trim that and we're going to keep that text up the top as well. I'm going to trim this a little bit just to have a bit of a cleaner line and then I'm going to do a even coat of paint over the top of my already dry paint layer. You need wet paint for the inlays to work, so I'm putting an even coat there and not too thick but also not too thin we need enough for our inlay to work with then I am placing my inlay design side down that grid should be facing up at you and then I'm going to gently press my inlay down making good contact with the paint now if you don't want wrinkles if I have heard it suggested that you lightly mist the inlay before you lay it down I don't mind them personally because I like a vintage look so you can see I have then misted my inlay and now I'm just very gently dabbing my inlay to smooth it out. 
after it's been drying for about an hour, I'm going to mist it again. I'm going to wait about 60 seconds and I'm just dabbing off some of the excess water and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to carefully start peeling away the inlay. It's best to go slow here and to take your time if you feel any resistance, lightly mist it again and then keep going. Set this off to one side when you're done because you will get another use, maybe two out of these. Once I'm done here, I'm going to seal the entire thing with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. And then I'm going to brush on Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. You wanna spray this with a sealer first so that you don't get any smudging. I'm now adding a border of Dixie Belle's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint around the outside of my design. There's already some trim around the outside that I'm just sort of following and I did pull the paint up a little bit higher uh, so that you could see it when you were looking front on looking at the artwork. And I'm using a small artist brush for this so that I can be a little bit more precise, but it is sealed. So if I go out of the lines, I can take a baby wipe and I can go in and I can actually move some of the paint from where I don't want it. When my paint has started to dry, I'm gonna do some wet distressing with a baby wipe. I'm gonna pull some of that green back so that you can see a little bit more of the buttercream underneath. I just want this to have a bit more of a cottagey sort of weathered feel. To finish this off, I'm going to be using the Crackle Style stamp from the Vintage Textures stamp with IOD black ink. So I've inked up part of my stamp and you can see I'm just sort of gently laying it down here and there. I'm not pressing the whole thing. And then I'm going to come in with a baby wipe shortly and I'm actually gonna wipe back some of my ink. Remember, the gloss clear coat has sealed my paint. So I've got a little bit of work time. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to gently remove some of the ink. It's not gonna completely remove it. It's gonna give it a more faded vintage feel here. Finally, I'm going to attach a little hook up to the top so that someone can hang this on the wall if they want to. So I'm pre-drilling a small hole and then I'm going to actually be using a screwdriver to put the screw in. Because this is a very thin board, I didn't want to accidentally have my screw go all the way through. And here's our finished artwork. I'm so happy with how this turned out. That melange paint inlay never fails to impress. There's so many fun designs to use. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our final project, we're going to be using these books that I thrifted. One way that I really like to do my book stacks is to actually peel back the colored covers. This is a little bit tricky. You need to find a corner and then start to peel back the layers, but it is so worth it. I love the end results of these. So you can see, I just sort of work in sections and slowly pull the color away. It leaves you with such a lovely paper cover that's textured. And if you're lucky, it'll also have some A Age from use over the years. You definitely have to have patience with this process, but it is so worth it. If this feels like a little bit too much work for you, I have done a video where I covered some hardcover books with some drop cloth. I will drop that link into this video and maybe that will be some inspiration for you. Otherwise, you could also paint the covers as well. To get off any stubborn bits that wouldn't come off, I'm just going to use some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly scuff the books. I'm then going to be using IOD's Antiquities stamp. This has a lot of wonderful typography that we're going to use today. So I have my book stack and I want to add designs to the sides, the spines of the books, but also the front and the back because I want these to be able to be used separate as well. So I have this little design here that I'm inking up, but I'm then coming in with a baby wipe and I'm wiping off the excess from the areas that I don't want to stamp with. And you'll see that I repeat this process with a variety of stamps. I just really had a play here. It was lots of fun working out what elements from what stamps I wanted to use. 
Now I'm going to add the little address from the same stamp. So inking up that section, wiping back the excess with the baby wipe. And then I'm going to position that on the bottom part of the spine of the book. Now I'm going to grab some different text from a different stamp and again this was just really a lot of fun. I just went with whatever felt right and you don't have to use this stamp if you do not have access to these. You could always use a stencil instead, perhaps you could use some decoupage paper or you could even maybe print off some labels for your books. Now I'm going to grab one of the round stamps and I'm going to use just the text from the center. For the next book I'm going to use the stamp that has the bicycle. I'm going to take the text up the top and again just wiping back any of the excess and then I'll also be making use of the text down the bottom. Because I want these books to be able to be displayed separate, not just as a stack, I'm going to add some stamps to the front of some of these and also on the back section, just depending on how they sit in the book stack. The Antiquities stamp set from IOD was really perfect for this project. There were so many different designs to choose from, so much wonderful typography to play with. It really was a pleasure to do this craft using those stamps. Because of how this book stack will stand with the others, I needed to add a back to this particular one. So I'm just going to add some of the details that were already on the spine to the back and also one of the round stamps. finish these off I'm going to wrap them with some twine. If you are not a fan of twine you could always use some ribbon or some lace instead. And here's our finished book stack. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think it's definitely worth the extra effort if you can to peel back those book covers to get this wonderful result. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this little wooden cabinet. Someone had already done some raised stenciling on it and while it was pretty, it's just not my style. So I've taken it outside and I'm going to use some 80 grit sandpaper to even out and get rid of that raised stenciling. I want a flat surface to work on. 
Now that we have an even surface to work on after cleaning, I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. It's pretty close to the original color, which is great because it saves me doing extra coats. I'm going to paint the entire thing with that Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint, and it's gonna take one and a half coats to get even coverage. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description of this video. Next, we're going to be using the new Dainty Flourishes Mold. This has so many gorgeous, ornate elements here. I'm so excited to be using this. My first step is to dust my molds with cornstarch. So I'm going to dust wherever I think I'm going to cast those. I'm going to turn it over and tap off the excess. And then I'm grabbing my Jovi air dry clay. I'm rolling it into a sausage sort of a shape here. It just makes it a bit easier to work it into the molds. And then I'm using my thumb to press down and work that clay into the details. I'm then using my thumb to push away the clay from the top the micro rim is a huge help here it really helps you get a clean line and then once I have that all sorted I will flip it over and that is going to help me get it out gravity is a big help here you just want to go really slow so that you don't accidentally rip it and then I'm going to cast the other one as well just repeating the same steps as before so as I said, I'm using Jovi air dry clay today. IOD clay is absolutely amazing as well, but you could also use resin for these if you prefer. Next, I'm going to cast some of the more delicate details down the bottom. I'm going to cast one of each. And again, just repeating that same step. I find if I push the clay away from me, the clay stays in the mold, but I also get a really nice line. I've also seen people use a ruler or a credit card even to try and get a flat back. I don't mind in this situation if it's not perfectly flat, I am going to be gluing it down on a flat surface. So I am sure that it will be fine. Now I want to add an element for the top of the cupboard. So I've cast this one in the center, again, dusting my mold with cornstarch and then working my clay into the design. I think this is going to be perfect up the top, a really lovely detail. Now I have all the castings that I want organized. I've laid them out on the cupboard and now I need to attach them. I'm using a strong wood glue for this and you can see I'm applying it to the back of the casting and then I'm using my finger to spread that glue so that there's good coverage. I'm then very gently positioning the mold where I want it to go and pressing down. Just be really gentle with this step. I'm going to repeat the same process for attaching each of my castings. I've given my molds about an hour to start to set. They're not completely dry, but I like to come in now and apply very gently a coat of whatever paint I'm using. In this case, it's that buttercream. I do this because I find that it minimizes cracking, it slows down the drying process, and you just tend to get a nicer finish. The next day, I'm coming in with some of Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat to seal the entire piece. I'm still going to be gentle here, and this is going to be a base for our next step. Once that's dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze. The Gloss Clear Coat is going to allow me to apply it and then wipe back as much or as little as I want. I'm going for a very vintage feel here. No surprises, I know, but I love this look. I think it's very effective. I'm going to lay that product down and making sure that it sits in the details of my castings and the recesses of that door and then wiping some of it back. This is definitely gonna give us that lovely vintage feel that I love. 
Glaze is a lovely subtle way to antique your piece but if you do not have access to it you could create a paint wash with a brown chalk paint for example. You could also use a brown wax. Those sorts of things are going to get you a similar look. As you're watching me today using the beautiful Dainty Flourishes mold, let me know in the comments if you are imagining a project that you have coming up where you can use this beautiful design. Once my glaze has completely dried, I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax to the details. I've got just a little bit on my finger and I'm very lightly just hitting the high points of my castings. I love this. It definitely lends itself to that French country feel. I'm then using some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress the edges. And here's our finished French country cabinet. I love how this turned out. Those molds have taken this piece to a whole new level. The Dainty Flourishes is definitely one of my new favorite molds to use. It will take whatever piece you have, no matter how plain it is, and turn it into something ornate. Let me know what you think of this in the comments picked up these lamps for just $15 each and while I wasn't loving the color I felt like they had a great shape. My first step after cleaning is to give each of these lamps one coat of Rust-Oleum's cream spray paint. Now this is going to be a great base for painting and it's also going to block out that bright red color. You can find a full product list in the description below and all these products on our website theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's Frames Mold. I am dusting my mold with cornstarch and then I'm going to be using Jovi Air Dry Clay to cast this lovely oval frame. This is going to go in the center of our lamp. So to start off with, I'm just casting a bunch of molds that I think are going to work on this lamp and then I'll be arranging them and gluing them down. I always like to use the cornstarch in my molds. It makes getting your castings out a lot easier. I'm now going to be using the classic elements mold and I'm going to be casting a few pieces from this design. You can see I work the clay into the design and then I use my thumbs to press out to push the clay down and to get a nice clean edge using that micro rim. I'm next going to cast this lovely little beaded trim. So I'm rolling my clay into a sausage sort of a shape and then I'm pressing it down into the design. And again, using my thumb to push that clay in and to get a nice clean edge. You can see I flex the mold before I try to pull it out. And next I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with one of the pieces from this mold. I'm just going to dust the bottom half of this design here and I'm going to work my clay only into that section. And this is definitely something that you can do you don't have to use the molds as they are you can take bits and pieces of them either by doing what I'm doing where you cast just a small part of it or you can cast the whole thing and then cut out what you want once I've cast several of each of those designs I'm going to start gluing them on I'm adding a strong wood glue to the back of each of the castings and then you'll see that I use my finger to spread it around. You can also use a paintbrush for this step. I'm also bending and manipulating my casting to fit on the lamp. You want to make sure you have really good contact so that it's able to be all glued down and you also want to be very gentle not to accidentally damage the details of your castings. I'm adding the little beaded trim up the top. It just fits. I don't have to take any of that off. And next I'm going to be adding this little detail to the top front part of the lamp and any little glue drips that I get, I will clean that up later. To hold this piece in place while the glue is drying so that it doesn't slide down, I'm going to be using some masking tape and I'm not worried if it takes a little bit of the spray paint off because we are going to be painting over the top of it. 
I'm now adding three of my little custom molds that I created by just casting part of the design from the Classic Elements mold. I'm adding that to the center part of the lamp. And again, I love using clay because I can bend it and mold it to suit whatever shape I'm adding them to. Again, just be really gentle not to damage your details. Down the bottom, I'm also going to be adding some of that same design, except I've turned it around so they sort of mirror each other and I'm just adding them around the bottom and I'm just being really careful again to make sure that I'm pressing it really well so that it has really good contact. And once I have all of the pieces down, I'm also going to be coming in with this little beaded trim from the Classic Elements mold and I'm going to be wrapping that around and adding a few sets of that so that the entire base is framed out by this little trim. IOD has so many beautiful molds, so if you're going to tackle a lamp makeover, don't feel like you have to use the same ones that I'm using. There are so many to choose from. The last mold that I'm adding is this lovely frame design. So I'm going to bend it and manipulate it to fit on the front. And then I'm also going to be using two pieces of masking tape to hold it in place. I gave my glue a few hours to dry. My castings are still wet, but now I'm coming in with some of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint and I'm going to dab and stipple that over the entire lamp. I find that this helps minimize cracking and it's also going to help my castings stay in place. So I'm going to cover the entire lamp with that Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. This won't be my final color, but when I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with a piece or what color I want to paint it, I like to pick a neutral like a white or a cream to put down to get me started. I came in the next day and I am using a mix of Dixie Belle's Sea Spray with Dixie Belle's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint and I am dabbing and stippling that mixture over my entire lamp. This is going to give the lamp some great texture, some great age. I'm going to cover the entire piece. Now this paint I did pick for a reason. I want it to be visible underneath my final coat of paint. I want to be able to distress it back and see that lovely chocolate sitting underneath. Once the sea spray mixture was completely dry, I came in and sealed the lamp with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. This is going to allow me to wipe back the next layer of paint to do some wet distressing. Once the clear coat was dry, I mixed up some of Fusion's milk paint in the color Almond Latte. I'm putting a cap full of the milk paint into a plastic container and then I'm measuring out the exact same amount in water. You want to do equal parts here. I'm then going to stir my mixture really well. I'm applying my milk paint with a chip brush today and you can see that I am brushing it on but I'm also dabbing and stippling and working it into all of the details of our castings. These castings have been drying for 24 hours so they are definitely ready to paint over. I don't recommend that you do this before they are completely set. It's important to note that milk paint dries lighter and then the color deepens when you seal it with a wax. The sea spray has created a wonderful texture that when my brush is pulling over the top of it, sometimes the bristles are skipping certain sections and I'm not being careful to go back and fix those up. I really like the effect that that's created and I'm also going to be doing some wet distressing anyway. One of my favorite things to do when using milk paint is to speed up the drying process. It creates some wonderful cracking texture, which is perfect for the French country look we're going for. Here, hopefully you can see how speeding up the drying process created some wonderful cracked finishes. Now it is a little bit uneven at the moment tonal wise but when I come in and add some wax later that will even out. Next I'm going to use a baby wipe to do some wet distressing. Because we have that gloss clear coat down I'm able to wipe back just to that chocolate sea spray mixture.
If you want an alternative for using the wet distress method, you could definitely come in with a 220 grit fine sandpaper and gently distress it back. However, you do have a little bit less control doing it this way. Next, I'm going to be sealing the entire piece using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear. I'm using my Best Dang brush to apply it. It's a lovely big brush and it has a lot of dense bristles, so I'm able to get into a lot of small areas. I'm then going to be using a microfiber cloth to buff that wax off. And you can see that lovely wet distressing that we did is really a lot more obvious once you seal your piece. It's definitely recommended that you use a wax to seal your milk pane as water can reactivate it. Now I'm going to be doing some layering with some coloured waxes. I'm starting first with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in White and you can see I'm brushing it on with a chip brush, working it into the details and then I am wiping back some of the excess with a microfiber cloth. I'm going to layer that down and then I'm going to come in with brown Best Dang Wax over the top and repeat the same process. And I actually come in one more time over the top with white. When you're creating old world finishes, you really have to think about all of the layers. I'm going to be repeating the same process over the entire lamp, paying particular attention to the castings that we added. I feel that the brown and white wax really bring out those beautiful details. And I'm also rubbing some of the wax over the rest of the lamp as well to help the look blend in. That brown wax is also going to find itself in a lot of the cracks and texture that we created by speeding up the drying process with the milk paint. So again, this just adds to that wonderful vintage feel. Now, if you do not have access to wax, you could try a paint wash or you could try using a glaze. Now I'm going to focus on the lampshades. They unfortunately were a little bit stained, so I'm going to mist it lightly with water, and then I'm going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint, and I'm going to give the lampshade two coats. I'm working that paint in almost like I'm dyeing the canvas fabric. When you're painting lampshades, it's also a good idea to have a globe nearby so you can see what it's going to look like when the lamp is on. So you definitely want to also consider painting the inside of your lamp. If you don't, you will be able to see the brush strokes when the lamp is on. So I'm going to give the inside of my lamp two coats of that drop cloth as well. It will mute how much light is able to come out of the lamp, but honestly, I would rather that than to be able to see messy brush strokes. I think it would be near impossible to get a perfect brush stroke finish on a lampshade. Once my lamp shade is dry, I'm going to be using IOD's Reverie Stamp. There are two beautiful ladies, they might be angels, I'm not sure, but they each face a different direction. I thought they would be perfect on these lamps, so I'm going to be putting one on each. So I'm inking up my stamp with my IOD Permanent Black Ink. I'm tidying up any areas that I got ink that I shouldn't. You can see I have it on a clear mount. I'm going to position it over the top of my lamp you can see that I'm just bracing the lamp with two little packets. It doesn't matter what you brace it with, just something to hold it in place. I am then hovering and then pressing down and I've always got one hand holding that stamp down while the other hand moves and applies pressure to make sure that we have good contact with all parts of the stamp. Now, I'm not worried if I don't get a perfect image here, we're going for a vintage look, but I wanna get the basic outline and you can see as I lift up that it transferred beautifully. 
So I'm going to grab the other stamp with the lady facing the other direction and I'm going to repeat the same steps. Once my ink has completely dried on both of the lampshades, I'm going to seal them with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer. And here are our finished French Country Lamps. I found these three pieces at the thrift store and thought that they would be the perfect bases for some French Country wall art. After cleaning, the first thing I did was give each of these artworks two coats of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. You can find a full product list in the description below and all these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Once my paint had completely dried, I pulled out IOD's Melange Paint Inlay. I still haven't used the entirety of this pack. I still have these beautiful bees, so we're going to be using them on the first artwork. I'm laying down a thick coat of paint, not too thick, but also it has to be thick enough for that inlay to be able to transfer into, so you have to find that happy medium. I'm then pressing my paint inlay design side down into the wet paint. You want that grid facing up at you. I'm then going to very carefully smooth the inlay down into my wet paint. And I'm trying my hardest to get as many of the wrinkles out as possible. And then I'm using my mister to dampen the inlay. I'm then using a cloth to further minimize the wrinkles. I don't mind a few of those here and there, but any really big ones can detract from your image. And then you can also also come in with a brayer to smooth it out a little bit more. I then came in with the hair dryer and sped up the drying process a little bit so that I could get some texture. While that's drying, I'm starting on my next artwork. I'm using this lovely floral design from the inlay and I'm positioning it on the center part. I am going to lose a little bit of that design off the side, but I don't think that that's going to matter overall. So I'm applying a thick coat of paint down just like the first time and then laying my inlay down, design side down. Once you do a few of these, it really becomes a lot easier. You don't even think about it. Next, just like before, I'm misting my inlay and then using a damp cloth to smooth it all out and to make great contact. If the wrinkles and the lines really bother you, I have heard it suggested that you mist your inlay first before you put it into your wet paint. So that's definitely something that you could try. For our final artwork, I pieced together a few different designs from the Melange inlay. Here you can see I'm just working out how they're going to sit. I'm then applying a thick coat of paint and for this one I am going to have to adjust these a little bit even as I'm applying them into the wet paint. I laid this first one down as is, pressed it into the paint. You can see I have a few wrinkles here already, a few creases, so I'm just smoothing those out. And then for the next one, I've positioned that pretty close underneath the text, again, smoothing that all out. But for the next one, I am going to have to snip off a little bit of the excess paper here so that I can have the text go in a slightly different spot. I'm just touching up the paint there, and then that way I can come in and I can add that text that I trimmed off earlier down where that little gap was. And then I'm positioning the last image down the bottom and smoothing it out. Finally, I will of course mist my design and apply some pressure. So it's very repetitive, but once you do a few, it is really easy to do these. I've let all of these dry for several hours and now I'm going to mist the inlay again. We're getting that paper nice and damp and then I'm going to start pulling it back. You will see here that I did start to feel a little bit of resistance. So I simply put my paper back down and applied a little bit more water. After you've applied the water the first time, you wanna give it about 60 seconds so that the water has time to soak in. And you can see here, I'm just pulling it back really slowly. And then once I've removed it, I will put this to one side because I will probably get another use or two out of it. 
to further minimize the lines left by the paint inlay, I have a damp cloth that I'm just running along my still slightly damp paint. This helps to reduce the look of the line. And I also find that using a 220 grit sandpaper very lightly also helps with the appearance of lines. Again, only if this really bothers you. Once my paint was dry, I used a 50-50 mix of gloss clear coat and water and I sprayed over the entire piece. This means that when I seal it later, I will not get any smudging as water can reactivate your inlay. I'm repeating the same steps for my second artwork. I'm misting my inlay, leaving it for about 60 seconds and then very carefully pulling my inlay back. I know that some people don't always seal their inlays with a spray sealer first before brushing on a sealer, but I really find that I have more success and less chance of smudging by doing this. Any spray sealer will do really. As you can see, this was definitely a design that I had to piece together. So I am going to get a few more lines here from the different pieces that I put together. So I'm using a combination of the wet rag and then I'm also going in with my paintbrush with my original drop cloth chalk mineral paint to touch up any of the areas that look really obviously different. It just, it gives it a bit more of a subtle transition look. So I'm sealing that. And then once that's dry, we're gonna focus on the frame. I'm mixing Dixie Belle's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint with the Sea Spray Texture Additive and stirring really well. This is going to thicken up my paint. It's going to give it a really wonderful texture. I'm applying it with a chip brush and I'm actually brushing it on. I usually stipple this on, but for this, I want it to look like weathered old barn wood. And because we've thickened up our paint, our brush strokes are gonna look more like wood grain. So I'm applying the sea spray mixture and I am actually overworking the paint because when you overwork the paint, you get more texture, more lines, and that's exactly what we want. So I've sped up the drying process and you can see I'm going over the top of that again before it's completely dry with my brush. I'm then using some of Dixie Belle's drop cloth over the top of our dry sea spray mixture. You can see that I am lightly running my brush over the top. I don't have a whole lot of paint on there and I'm allowing my brush to skip the texture that we created with that sea spray. So I want it to look like old barn wood that has been painted and weathered over the years. Once that's dry, I'm using Dixie Belle's Burlap Chalk Mineral Paint on our frame. Now, I am not aiming for full coverage here. I want some of that drop cloth to show through because we're actually going to be creating a wood look frame. These are not wood frames, they're a resin, I believe. So this is our base color and by adding the burlap and having the drop cloth there, there's gonna be some tonal difference. When that's dry, I'm using Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain Tobacco Road. I'm pouring a small amount of it out and then I'm using a chip brush to apply it to the frame. And you can see already that by applying those different toned paints and then adding the stain over the top, it really does create a lovely wood look. I really like how that Tobacco Road is bringing out the details in the frame. You can see that I am applying it with a brush and then I'm also using a smaller artist brush to get into some of the other trickier areas and I also use a paper towel to wipe back some of the excess. Once that stain is completely dry, I'm going to be sealing the frame with Dixie Belle's Clear Best Stain Wax. So I'm applying it with a brush and then I'm going to be wiping back the excess with a paper towel. This is going to seal our stain, but it's also going to be a great base for our next step. To age and soften the look of this frame, I'm now coming in with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in white. I'm applying it in sections and then I'm wiping back the excess. I'm working it into all of those lovely details. And again, this is going to soften that brown and add to the vintage look that we're going for. And that clear wax that's underneath is allowing me to wipe back as much or as little as I want. 
If you don't have access to wax, you could definitely achieve a similar look by creating a white paint wash or using a glaze. Next, I'm going to seal the interior section of our frame with the same clear wax. I'm going to be repeating the same process on all of our artworks today. Next, I'm going to be using one of IOD's much older Labels 2 molds. I am dusting that with cornstarch and then I'm using Jovi's air dry clay. I'm going to be using this to create some little label plates to go underneath each of our artworks. So I'm going to be casting three of these. And these older ones do not have the micro rim, so I definitely had to take my time a little bit more with these. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still get these anywhere, guys, but this is the Labels 2 mold if you want to type it in to Google and see if you can still grab these anywhere. It is an older mold. I let my mold dry for about an hour and now I'm using Dixie Belle's bronze patina paint. I'm applying it very gently because my casting is still very fresh. It's still very delicate, but I wanted to paint it before I put it onto my artwork so I didn't get any of that bronze on anywhere else of our artwork. Once my paint was dry, I used Dixie Belle's White Wash Glaze. I also used a mister to mist the product to get it to move a little bit easier. This is a water-based product, so I can do that. This is going to give our little plate here more of an oxidized vintage look. I then dabbed off the excess with a paper towel. I do end up going back in with one more light coat because we want to actually add a transfer soon. So I need it to be light enough to show. You can see I've used a little spatula here to move my casting. I found that a lot easier to move those wet castings with that. I'm applying some wood glue to the back of my label there. And then I'm positioning it down the bottom in the center and pressing down gently. If you don't have access to this mold, you can find a label plate that's a little bit thicker from the Olive Crest mold by IOD. The next day, I grabbed some of my offcuts from the Brocant transfer. I'm not exactly sure what this script says, but I've applied it to the center and then I'm actually just using my fingernail to burnish the design down. This was such a small area and I didn't want to damage our little plate that we created. So I just gently used my nail to rub the design down and I'm going to repeat the same process for each of these transfers and I will seal the transfers with some Bestang Wax in clear. And here are our finished French country artworks. I love how these turned out. That IOD melange inlay is absolutely beautiful. And I definitely recommend that you grab artworks from the thrift store because you can turn them into beautiful pieces for your home. Let me know if you had a favorite out of these three pieces. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. For my next project, I'm going to use this little wooden plaque that I thrifted and I'm going to give it two coats of the Paint Couture Angelic Mineral Paint. We used this one at the start as well. So it's going to take two coats to get the coverage I want. This paint is so beautiful and smooth. And like I said, I won't have it in the first round of products available on my website, but I will be adding it shortly. When my paint was completely dry, I used IOD's La Campagne stamp again. This beautiful roses stamp is in that set and I'm very carefully pressing it down. I'm just using IOD permanent black ink. This one is on a backer. I've got a lot of room to manipulate the stamp here so I can have that on the plastic. And I'm just going to change the different angles that I'm applying it. And then I'm also going to add another part of the stamp down the bottom just to extend that, that little pattern and that's the thing about these stamps is that you can actually just take bits and pieces that you want from it you don't have to use the whole thing
Once my ink was completely dry, I took Paint Couture's Embossing Medium. Very excited about this one. There's a lot of potential here. I'm going to take some of it out of the container and I'm going to put it in a plastic container. This product can be tinted and I am going to be tinting it today with the Lux Bronze Metallic Paint. I'm not going to get a perfect metallic tone, but it is going to make it a little bit easier for me to then go over the top of that again to make it bronze. It's going to take less coats of me going over the top of it. So I'm just going to take several drops of it and add it to my embossing medium and then stir it really well. I'm going to be using this product today with a stencil, but I could definitely see this being used at Christmas time to create the look of snow. So I'm definitely excited to try that. I'm then going to be using JRV's mini jar label stencil. I'm positioning it in the center and you can see I have a little spatula that I'm going to be using. Once I have it where I want it to go, I'm gonna take some of that embossing medium and add it to my spatula. And then I'm going to start dragging it over the top of my stencil. I'm holding the stencil down firmly. These JRV stencils are really nice and thick, so they're very easy to work with. I'm just holding my stencil in place, but you could definitely tape it in place or use some sort of a spray adhesive if you're worried about your shifting. So you can see I'm just applying it over the entire stencil and once I have the entire stencil covered that's when I come in and I actually start scraping away the product and you can see I'm scraping and then putting it back in the container. So you don't need much product to do this and then when I'm happy I'll carefully lift straight up. When my embossing medium is dry, I'm going to put my stencil back in place. I've cleaned it to make sure I don't have any excess product. And then I'm going to take some of that Lux Bronze Metallic Paint again, and I'm using a JRV stencil brush, and I'm going to start stenciling over the top. So this is just going to give a lovely raised detail to my stencil. And because I tinted that embossing medium, it's only going to take one coat of this paint to get the finish that I want. Once I've finished my stencil, I'll pull it straight up and you can see that it has given it a beautiful raised detail. Next, I'm gonna take that same bronze paint and I'm going to use a small artist brush and I'm going to go around the edge, the border, of this little plaque that we're working on. And I'm going to add that bronze paint the whole way around. And it's going to take two coats for me to get full coverage. When my paint was dry, I grabbed that crackle step one again, and I'm going to apply one coat over the top of my plaque. I'm going to let that dry for about 30 minutes, and when it's tacky, I'm going to come in with step two. Once my step two is dry, I'm going to grab that Van Dyke Brown Glaze again. And you can see I'm just putting a little bit into a plastic container and I'm going to water it down with my mister. This is just going to make it a, a little bit lighter, less intense. So I'm stirring that. And then I'm going to apply that to my plaque. And this time it's going to take less wiping for me to get the look I want. So I'm going to work in sections, adding the product and then grabbing a wet wipe and wiping it away. So wherever I don't want it to be as dark, I will wipe more. I could if I wanted to come in with my mister to further dilute the product. This will just be something that you will do to your liking and you don't have to use an antiquing glaze for this step. I'm just really having a lot of fun with this today. And here's our finished plaque. I love how this turned out. I'm having so much fun using these new products. That embossing medium is a game changer. I can't wait for you guys to try it as well. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. 
I really hope that you enjoyed this video collection and you can find the products used in this video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share this out to a friend that you think might enjoy it.